What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video from Exotic Astrology. It's a bright Saturday morning today and we will discuss another example chart and if you have not subscribed to my channel then please subscribe and click in the notifications bell so that you get emails when I upload them okay and if you have any questions queries and comments then let me know in the comment section regarding the previous example which I post posted okay so this is the example chart of a girl that I know so let's start from the beginning okay we will see the first house okay first house has three planets here okay now we have to analyze the lordships of these planets okay we know they are Jupiter Venus Rahu but what does these planets represent for her in this chart okay they will rule different houses as I had said in my earlier videos so which house does Jupiter rule here just see where is Sagittarius and Pisces falling Sagittarius is number 9 which is in the third house first second third Pisces is number 12th which is in the first second third fourth fifth sixth house so sixth house and the third house has the numbers 9 and 12 that means this Jupiter in her chart for a Libra ascendant because she's a Libra ascendant number 7 is in the first house okay so for a Libra ascendant Jupiter rules the third house and the sixth house okay now Jupiter is sitting in the ascendant itself and as I always say that any planet in the ascendant becomes very important okay now here Jupiter is not alone it is sitting with Venus and Rahu so it is clouded okay so let us analyze the the lordships of Venus here Venus is ruling the first house itself okay so Venus is ruling also the eighth house because the sign Taurus which is ruled by Venus is falling in the eighth house one two three four five six seven eight okay so this Venus which is sitting in the Lagna itself Lagna or the ascendant is ruling the ascendant itself and the eighth house because the sign Libra is itself ruled by Venus so the ruler of the sign is sitting in the house itself okay now what about Rahu who is Rahu Rahu is the ruler of Aquarius the co-ruler okay so where is Aquarius Aquarius is number 11 so now you check 1 2 3 4 5 so Rahu is the fifth Lord okay Jupiter is the third Lord sixth Lord and Venus is the first Lord or the ascended Lord as you call and the eighth Lord and Rahu is the fifth lord okay so she has a conjunction of rulers of five houses the the first house the eighth house the sixth house and the third house okay now if you ignore the rulerships of the planets if you just take the planets as it is forget which house Jupiter is ruling forget which house Venus is ruling forget which house Rahu is ruling okay so if you forget all of these about which I will discuss later but as of now Jupiter and Venus they are natural benefics okay Jupiter is the most benefic planet of course Parashara says Venus is the most benefic because Jupiter gives us some lessons at times which can be a bit painful okay but those lessons are also learnt in good ways okay Jupiter represents those lessons which we learn by hearing by through the years okay for example the scriptures say that you should not drink alcohol okay so now you hear it and you realize yes this is bad I should not do but suppose you do not realize by that okay then what you do you go through experience you drink it okay that's second class personality you understand first class personality is one who understands by hearing second class is one who does not understand by hearing but he sees other people okay that whoever has taken alcohol is suffering okay is dying basically so then he understands okay his the years are not sufficient but his eyes give him the answer that yes what scripture says right that alcohol will give you uh, give you trouble at the end it is one of the pillars of sin the four regulative principles mentioned in Shrimad Bhagavatam 
Okay, now apart from that, there's a third class personality. Third class personality is one who has heard, one who has seen, but still doesn't believe. So he says, yeah, they said it's bad and I have seen my friends spoiling their health, but maybe it will not help happen to me. So they go and ta taste it. Okay. And they say, you will hear people saying these days, it's, it is okay to taste everything now. Okay. It is okay. I mean, you can taste everything. You should taste everything in life once, now, good and bad, all these uh, funny dictums which the media projects onto the ignorant mass and people blindly follow it like a blind leading the blind to the ditch. Okay. And these third class people will uh, see here and then they will feel as if they are exempt from this. Okay. And then they will go and indulge in that. So, the, there is another, uh, so after that they realize, okay, that they, their liver is spoiled and then they decide, okay, we will not take it, take it anymore. And then there is a fourth grade, the last grade, who has heard, seen, experienced, but still they don't uh, improve, yes. So, let's see which category we belong to, okay. So now Jupiter, Venus are benefic planets. So that is why uh, there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of goodness in the person. Okay. The person will be uh, having inherently a lot of goodness inside her. Okay. And which is definitely there as I see here because Venus is very powerful in its own sign in the Mool Trikon sign. Okay. And Venus is sitting in the nakshatra of Chitra here. Okay. What is Chitra nakshatra? Chitra nakshatra represents jewels. Okay. Shining star. So Lord of the Ascendant is sitting in the nakshatra of shining jewel. Shining star. Brilliance. Exuberating brilliance all over. Okay. So she is definitely going to be very good looking. Although there are different ways to see we have to see the karana lord associated with the first fifth or the third house especially for beauty like pamela anderson or ashwarya rai <laughs> but here we are talking of uh, beauty on a generic sense okay so number one reason is the lord of the ascendant is sitting in the house itself okay in the first house itself in the ascendant itself so this person is likely to have a very strong body okay and the ideals of this person will be very good very fixed with one's ideals okay no compromise with one's ideals and jupiter venus are benefics that is why this combination will also thrive okay and so here jupiter is sitting in the lagna venus is sitting in the lagna okay so and Rahu is the fifth Lord. I will come to the Lordships later. But here, Jupiter uh, represents children and Venus represents the husband. Okay. So, these two areas will be the focus of our life. Okay. So, that is what is going to be at the top of the head because first house is the head. You cannot uh, go away from the head, right? And there is one of the special yogas in astrology, one of the five Mahapurush yogas, which is known as Malavya Mahapurush yoga, which is forming because Venus is sitting in its small tricorn sign in the first, fourth and seventh. Either of these four houses, if Venus sits in the sign Taurus, which is number two or seven, which is Libra, this Mahapurush yoga is formed. Mahapurush Yoga does not mean the person is a Mahapurush, but there are certain traits related to that planet which is in a good, um, it's present in a considerably high amount, okay, in the person. So here Venus represents beauty, love for relationships and being with people and being romantic, okay. So those traits will be very highly present and the person will be very much prone to luxury okay so jupiter venus we have to see which planets are aspecting jupiter jupiter represents the value system and venus is luxury so this girl's value system will be very much driven by luxury okay now jupiter is ruling the sixth house also okay and the third house third house is the house of hard work efforts okay 
So this also tells me that this person will have to work very hard in life to get things. Jupiter is also the sixth lord. Okay, what is the sixth house? Sixth house is the house of disputes, trials, tribulations. The lord is sitting in the lagna itself. Okay, so this means that she will also have to undergo all these trials and tribulations. Okay. And sixth house is also the house of separation from spouse because this is the seventh house and this is twelfth from the seventh. Twelfth house is the house of laws. So when the sixth house aspects the seventh house, it is likely to be understood that there will be a few breaks in relationships before the person gets married. Okay, or maybe uh, even after marriage also. Okay, depending on the dasha and the planets and the conjunctions and depending on the strength of the overall chart. Okay, disputes within the uh, course. Okay, now Venus is also the eighth lord of sudden occurrences, transformations, deaths, accidents, chronic diseases, illnesses. Okay, is sitting in the lagna. Okay, so whenever she starts a new relationship or breaks a new relationship, sixth lord of breakage is sitting with Venus, she will undergo major transformation in the first house, which is the Lagna. People will say, oh, you have changed. <laughs> now, Ketu is in the seventh house. Okay, so this also shows that the person can have uh, the marriage or relationships with people who are from a different caste community or background okay now apart from this ketu also shows splits okay so this can also mean that the relationship of this girl with the spouse or the husband can change over time okay or they may have to live separately due to some reason the husband will be going somewhere and coming somewhere and then sometimes she may not be there sometimes he may not be there okay so there you go venus in the lagna giving mahapurush yoga and then you have ketu in the seventh house okay and now rahu is also in the first house what is rahu rahu is the significator of scandals cheating basically okay so uh, this person has to unfortunately undergo uh, experiences where he or she uh, where she will be cheated okay and cheated by whom by venus okay rahu is with venus okay and it is with jupiter so what would you suggest this girl be very careful whenever you choose a person okay or Whenever you go to a spiritual organization or take up some spiritual path, do not do it whimsically. Do it under the guidance of people who you know have already succeeded there. Okay. Or whenever you get into a relationship or in matters of marriage, you need to be very careful because this is sitting with Rahu. So Venus Rahu also gives unnatural inclinations in relationships. Okay. The person may have... Uh, utopian concept of relationship which does not materialize in reality and only after a few breaks okay this person can realize because Rahu is cloud it does not allow you to see the reality the person can feel as if yes this is my dreamland I am living here but then the reality is something else okay because Venus is the eighth lord of transformation also so basically whenever this person will get into a new or leave a new leave a old relationship they she will undergo major transformation because of rahu and jupiter okay and you would suggest her to go for uh, astrological matching and advice using astrology and other spiritual practices so that this person does not get cheated okay rahu is the cloud who comes and then goes and makes things haywire completely okay now jupiter is having directional strength in the first house okay which means it's extremely powerful so this girl will be able to hear the good advice of people okay and she will likely get people who will give her good advice okay my only concern is this is with rahu so <laughs> anyways now third lord in the first house so she will have a lot of short distance travel in this life okay third house is also short distance travel saturn the fifth lord 
of romance is sitting in the fifth house itself okay now this is something uh, this is a dual state because saturn at the on one hand delays things but here it is ruling the fifth house so it will try to protect this house okay so this indication tells me that this is aspecting the seventh house because wherever saturn sits it aspects the third house from itself aspect we will discuss later means trying to put its energy there okay so there is likely to, to be some delay in the marriage and fifth house matters of children or few breaks in love and romance relationships because fifth house is love romance relationships etc fourth lord is also saturn sitting in the fifth house so the mother is likely to be very creative here fourth lord of mother and the sixth lord is jupiter as we already said here okay and sixth house is also the house of celibacy so she might be forced to practice celibacy at times which means she might have to stay away from her husband in some point of her life whenever jupiter gets activated okay and seventh lord mars is sitting in the ninth house okay so this indicates in in the sign of gemini so this person is going to be extremely talkative whoever the her person is the spouse is going to be extremely talkative extremely flamboyant extremely show off because gemini likes to show off okay and he will be very aggressive in nature okay because it is mars okay and then mars is sitting in the ninth house of father so unfortunately uh, she had lost her father when she was very young okay because mars is a malefic it's a major malefic so malefic in the trines is not considered good which are the trines the first house the fifth house and the ninth house okay and all the three houses see the first fifth and ninth represents you okay first house is your body in this current life fifth house is your past life and ninth house is your next life okay fifth house is your children ninth house is your father and first house is you yourself so you your son and your father all three have malefics here now 10th lord of career is in the 12th house okay of foreign lands etc and sun the 11th lord is placed in the 11th house itself now you may say that sun is in leo sun is extremely powerful well that is true sun is inherently very powerful because it is in its own sign leo it's extremely powerful there but unfortunately it is in this axis aspected by saturn because saturn aspects the seventh house from itself so saturn shows the denials in life okay so saturn from the fifth house is aspecting sun sun is the significator of father so denial of the father now if this person's father would be alive see there are two influences here one is the 12th lord of uh, sorry the ninth lord of father which is mercury is sitting in the 12th house of laws another malefic is in the ninth house and the significator of father son is also afflicted so there are three wrong indications 12th lord uh, sorry the ninth lord in the 12th is not good for the father presence of a malefic in the ninth house is also not good neither is malefic aspect to son considered good okay and if you carefully observe son is under dual affliction by ketu and saturn because ketu aspects the fifth house from where it's it's one two three four five so one indication about the difficulties related to father is saturn k2 aspecting mars in the ninth house and ninth lord of father which is mercury is sitting in the 12th house of loss okay so this clearly indicates me and uh, lastly there is a very 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 powerful yoga in this chart this yoga is phenomenal this is very powerful this is one of the rare yogas which is known as the crest jewel the end summit of it all the best of the best of the best of the best of the best yogas in astrology combinations the best that you can have although this is not a very powerful yoga i mean the yoga is very powerful but in this horoscope it is not very powerful but even then this yoga is there and it is acting 
what is the name of that yoga do you know <laughs> it is the conjunction of moon and mercury it is known as dharma karma dhipati yog dharma karma dhipati yog means when the ruler of the ninth and the tenth are in some link okay then that is called dharma karma dhipati yog so here mercury is the ninth lord because the sign gemini number three is in the ninth house and tenth lord is moon okay so the two rulers of the ninth house and the twelfth house are in the uh, ninth lord and tenth lord are in the twelfth house okay so although uh, these are in the twelfth house but um, they are ruling the ninth house and the twelfth house okay and mercury is exalted here in 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 virgo it is extremely powerful so she is likely to be very intelligent okay her ability to grasp things will be very high she will be picking up things very fast very quick okay and moon mercury conjunction is there in the 12th house okay so this can show some depression at times i would call it rather over processing because mercury is intelligence and moon is emotion so this parallel processing is going on always is this right is that right okay and at the end of the day what would you suggest this girl i would give her a suggestion that she should take to spirituality and some spiritual path because these malefics are there in the trines which will not likely allow her to be happy with whatever she has in life she will always have this complaint that i don't feel happy inside okay i don't feel good about myself i don't feel good about this i don't feel good about that although jupiter is in the lagna but all the three trines the first fifth and ninth all the three trines are reflected severely okay so when she practices spirituality what is going to happen is that this combination is going to become active the dharma karma dipati yog see karma dipati is the 10th lord because 10th house is called the house of karma adipati is ruler and dharma is ninth house so dharma karma dipati yoga is very 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 powerful it is present in very in charts of greatly exalted personalities like swami vivekananda lord ram etc of course lord ram is god himself but uh, if you take as a mundane representation you will find his that yoga in his horoscope okay now what does the dharma karma adipati yoga mean why is it called the crest jewel the best of the best of the best of the all yogas that any uh, person can have in astrology okay it means the person's actions are in line with god so it is said if somebody is born with this conjunction or with this combination okay then god uses his or her hands to do things which are going to uplift society okay and those will have long lasting benefits tremendous name fame glory wealth and wealth not necessarily the mundane wealth but any sort of great 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 activities are seen through this yoga okay and this conjunction is happening in the 12th house which is further good for spirituality because 12th house represents moksha it represents the last last house it is the exit okay so and lastly i would say uh, the both the houses of money that is the 11th house and the second house are afflicted by saturn because saturn aspects the 10th house from where it sits so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 okay and 11th house so second house and 11th house both are houses of money so this girl needs to be patient when it comes to earning money and savings okay because saturn is not going to release of the money because it is the significator of delays and disappointments but it is also the significator of surety wherever saturn is sitting you will surely get result of that house okay do not worry so that's it from my side a malavya mahapurush yoga with beautiful venus sitting in the ascendant and dharma karma dipati yoga and sun in its own sign these are beautiful placements okay so that's it from my side if you have any questions queries and comments then please let me know in the comment section okay and until next time bye bye see you